Welcome back to My Medieval Corner. In today's episode, we're going to hash some things out, such as why I prefer to be a man-at-arms in the SCA, how easy it is to burn yourself out in this hobby, the importance of angles in a fight. We're also going to go over a couple things, like why you should film your training, and we're going to do some pell work with an axe. Then, I'm going to tell you about my first steps into a new realm of medieval combat. As is tradition, grab your horns, because at the end, we will have a drink. So have a seat in your home throne, and let's get to it. I don't mean to sound presumptuous, but I feel that I'm going to catch some shit for this one. So... In medieval fighting, there's usually some type of mentor-to-student system. This segment is geared towards SCA because that's the system I'm most familiar with and the topic of this segment. As my journey expands, I will touch on other systems of training. Depending on your style or your personality, you'll find somewhere to fit in. This generally starts with getting along with a few fighters, and the house will decide if you mesh well. Then comes the belting. It tends to go man-at-arms, squire, the knighthood. You can compare this to high school, college, and career. I say this because as a man-at-arms, you can learn many different things from many different fighters. Once you go squire, it's more like you've locked down your major and are pursuing a select form. Knighthood is like you've gotten your career and tenure. The hard part about joining the chivalry is that in some systems of combat, it can be who you know, not what you know. This can go as deep as what household you have joined or what knight you have squired for. It can even mean service over martial skill. I like staying at man-at-arms because, one, I don't like people. I keep to myself even in group situations. Now, I'm no saint. I don't do a lot in the service aspect, and I feign from event coordination. So, I understand where the game stands. And two, just like fighting, learning is a fluid form. I want to absorb as much as I can from everyone I can. Take what I learn and mold it into my own. Where a lot of trainers can expect you to follow a certain set. It also bears no final commitment. So, I'm free to pursue my own style. I am a proud stick jock, and I was never good at conforming anyways. I even have a joke regarding my belt. I tell fighters I'll wear the blue belt until it finally fades to white. But this is the great thing about this sport and hobby, is that you can do you. If you want to serve and dedicate and play the political pageantry, go for it. If you just want to show up, throw down and go home, you can do that too. This crazy hobby can get overwhelming. It can take over your life and your home if you let it. I've seen people jump into this pit with both feet and after a few years they fall off completely. Either they bit off more than they could handle in the way of projects and training, or they dove too deep into a game they just weren't prepared for. Sometimes it can get personal. And when I say politics, I don't mean national governmental beliefs. I mean the way some of these games are conducted by the ones in charge. I've seen a lot of favoritism, expectations, and ass-kissing in my day. I choose to keep a lot of these politics at arm's reach, and even that is too close. I believe the best way you can avoid burning out is to go at your own pace. Just like in armor training, if you go balls to the wall, 
you'll wind up sore and want to drop it completely. Like with the personal issues, armoring, weaponry, and garb creation can get out of hand. You start collecting components, dumping a ton of money into this, and then suddenly your house is overtaken by cloth, leather, weapons, armor pieces, etc. I've seen it get so bad that it turned into a form of hoarding. To the point where people are enveloping their entire lives around this. I don't know about you, but I do have other passions that I pursue outside of medieval fighting. Having other passions can help avert burning out. It makes you change your creativity. This can be one of the healthiest hobbies you can do. It involves physical fitness, creative outlets, and constant learning. But that all depends on you. I think all hobbies should be enjoyed in your free time, not take over your time. So take your time and always go at your own pace. Now that I've covered some serious issues, let's get back to the combat. I love axes. They're a good all-around tool and an even better weapon. They can be vicious in close quarters, and they are brutal with impact. Using the weight of the head to deliver your strikes, you can keep this weapon moving indefinitely, if you know how to use it. In this segment, I will be using an SCA legal axe made from rattan, leather, and foam. Because I am training for steel, I will be using strikes and combos that are legal in the ACW. Starting off in this pell work video, we're going to do some basic strikes at full range of the axe, holding the handle at the bottom. This will be free flow movements. Use your hips to guide your shots and allow the head to travel to your next shot. Much like a mace or a morning star, the more centrifugal force that drives into your strikes, the more impact it will bring. Try not to fall into the same strike patterns by changing your target. The X pattern is good, but it's too easy to just do a headshot and an offside. So start moving to body shots and skipping the offside to make the reset. Use this exercise to warm up and give the weapon freedom of flow. Let your axe tell you where it wants to go. Unlike the next part, this is more of slicing motions rather than chops. Next, we're going to work on chopping attacks. This is meant to hit hard and re-chamber. It's good for double shots, punching, and destroying your opponent when they're on the ropes. This will usually land on your attack side because initiating a chop strike is kind of tough on your offside. This is a great shot to get your opponent shield up and quickly switch to a body strike. Use your shield to help manipulate your opponent to create the openings. Lastly, we're going to talk about punching with the axe. Choke up on the handle of your weapon and punch your opponent with the axe head. This is great for making your opponent pay for getting too close. If you have basic boxing experience, you'll do great with this. Because if you miss with the axe head, you usually hit with your gauntlet. Be wary of switching your grip mid-fight because your chances of dropping the weapon go through the roof. Adopt a boxing style to keep your guard up, and good form will make this a devastating style. Quick side note, don't forget that your ax can be a control tool. You can hook and pull shields, or the haft, or a blade of another weapon. Use it to your advantage, and you can quickly gain control of the fight.
While we're here at the Pell, I'm going to talk a bit about angles, their importance and application. I can't stress this enough that cutting an angle can be game-changing in a fight. I've seen too many fighters get clocked because they stayed in the same spot or ran straight in or straight out of an engagement. My knight taught me a rule. Three steps. If you don't cut an angle in three steps, you're dead. In SCA, it's death. In ACW, it's a loss of balance and you could be out of the fight. So if you can, learn to be aggressive in your footwork and cut those hard 45 degrees. You'll catch your opponent off guard. And again, with SCA, you'll get the kill because their defense won't be ready. And in steel combat, you can knock them off balance and send their helmets into the dirt. It helps establish dominance and skill. So when you're at your Pell, practice stepping with your combos and clinching. Use distance to help train your swings in close range and at the range of damage. Much like regular practice, try stepping in and out. There's a lot of layers to this, so start small and add to the dynamic. For a beginner, I'd try cold stepping on a 45 degree angle to your sword side. Engage your shield and simultaneously flat snap. Trial and error. Sometimes you'll get too close and sometimes you'll be too far out. For moderate to advanced fighters, I'd start a three to four strike combo that includes one angle. Disengage, then re-engage with the opposite angle. For this drill, we will do a double tap to an offside, stepping to the 45 to your shield side. Disengage and immediately re-engage with the sword side 45, shield and sword strike. This isn't a hard formula that you need to follow to win, but it's a good exercise to help your creativity when it comes to combos and attack. On the defensive, it will help you slip, stick, and move. I built this channel to help grow my fighting. And with that, I've learned that it is invaluable to film your training. Especially if you're a solitary fighter and your training is solely up to you. With filming, you have the opportunity to go back and pick out inconsistencies. You can look at times where you felt a combo didn't land right or your footwork wasn't correct. You can take this chance to see flaws in your form. Own up to them and then implement solutions for the next practice. After that, you can go back and see if these solutions worked. Much like any other sport, watching yourself succeed or fail can be a great teacher. I am mostly a solitary fighter. I have an extensive martial arts background, which includes MMA. But since I've left the gyms and the lockdown of last year put group fighting on hold... I felt the only way I could teach myself was to film and examine. I knew that if I couldn't get a third person view, I would solidify bad habits and my fighting would suffer horribly. It's easy to do. Set up a tripod, hit record. Luckily, with today's realm of social media fighters, you can get great feedback from other people in the sport. That's why I always ask in my Pell Work videos, if you see anything that might be off or that I may be missing, please let me know in the comments.
I am very excited to announce that I have started training with the Salt Lake City Crusaders, the Utah chapter of Armored Combat Worldwide. Recently, I was contacted by one of their fighters and was asked to come check out a practice. I was immediately hooked. I have yet to get an armor, but I feel I have a lot that I can bring to the table. With this new journey, I will be learning new rules for armored combat and implementing new additions to my workout and training regimens. I even plan on building my steel fighting kit, which will be a fun experience that I plan to share here on my channel. I believe that as I take on this new adventure, I will be able to bring you more content and have more things to discuss. Also, recently, the SCA will be lifting the ban on in-person events and practices. With that said, I will be doing double duty when it comes to fighting. I couldn't be happier, to be honest. Keep on the lookout for practice videos for both styles and deeper analyzations of the differences. There was a wide range of emotions in this episode, from dire observations to creative axe work, to putting yourself out there as a fighter, and some great announcements at the end. I believe it's time to celebrate. Today's horn chug is Evolution Amber from Wasatch Brewing Company. Skull. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy what you see here at My Medieval Corner, please like and subscribe. Be on the lookout for more Pell videos with different weapons and shield styles. And as always, let me know in the comments. I'm also working on a shield build video to show you how to make a shield that will conform to both SCA and ACW standards. I'll see you soon for episode 7. This is a journey in medieval combat that we can all share.